The week of March 29th, 2021. This is the Plankton Review with Pacific Plankton. Fresh from the edge of San Francisco Bay, via light microscope, a snapshot of local marine plankton. Like and subscribe below for more plankton-related content. Marine plankton are living ocean drifters. This week, I saw an increase in zooplankton. Zooplankton are the animal-like plankton that eat other organisms. Copepods, rotifers, polychaetes, barnacles, and villagers. This variety follows several weeks of robust phytoplankton activity. The phytoplankton are the plant-like plankton that many of the zooplankton feed on. Highlights in the zooplankton this week include this polychaete worm larva. Notice the segments in bristles. This is a pheronid worm larva, a young horseshoe worm in its free living larval stage. Much of the zooplankton are larval organisms, like this young crab zoea. It has large, characteristic spikes on its shell. Even a shrimp zoea. The guest star this week is the sea cucumber. It's an echinoderm, related to sea stars and sea urchins. Here is the pentacula larval stage. There are a cluster of feeding tentacles at one end. Microscopic ossicles just below the skin are shiny and birefringent in polarized light. Several of the calanoid copepods in this week's review have a hitchhiker attached to their side, a large parasite for such a small organism. They are the microniscus larva of a parasitic isopod. These Epicaridians use two different crustacean hosts to complete their life cycle, like a large tick. See what happened when I placed the microscope slide cover slip and here it let go of the copepod. Now we can really zoom in here and closer there. The largest of these parasites that I have ever seen is attached to this copepod. It is nearly as big as the copepod itself. I also spotted a small copepod that appears to be attached to a larger copepod. Is this possibly a copepod parasite? One last polychaete worm, this one from the Magellanidae family. It has long feeding tentacles, also called palps. And there is its proboscis. Phytoplankton are the plant-like plankton that make their food from sunlight, water, and CO2. Noctiluca, a dinoflagellate, has been present in every plankton sample recently, waving its long tentacle. While diatoms are single-celled algae with cell walls of silica, like glass, they're a major component of the phytoplankton. I noticed a slight shift in the chain-forming diatoms this week, less skeletonema and more chains of the diatom catoceros, like this catoceros socialis. This is Dotylum, a common local diatom. There were large, round, distinctive, centric diatoms present in every sample, and this long, blurry goop covered chain of a beautiful diatom called Odontella. Ocean weather. Remember that Catoceros? While my sample contained a mixture of diatoms, including Catoceros, abundances of Catoceros have been reported all the way down the coast this past week, as far south as Los Angeles. Sometimes the ocean is patchy, but if the scale of influence is large enough, changes in the phytoplankton and zooplankton can follow suit. What influence is so large that it might be fueling statewide diatom dominance? Think of those steady, strong, north, northwest winds you might have been feeling on your face at the beginning of last week. North and northwest winds blowing down our coastline fuels a process called upwelling. 
upwellings bring nutrients to surface waters. And upwelling is the reason why our coastline is so incredibly productive, from whales to fisheries to plankton. At the beginning of the week, our springtime upwelling winds turned on. Nutrients were brought up from depth, and then the wind relaxed. Nutrient-rich surface waters were left to linger near shore. And in those delicious waters, diatoms bloomed. Models say we're in for more north, northwest wind. It's really picking up towards Thursday. Will the upwelling crank start turning again? Or will the sea state remain calm and shift to more dinoflagellates? Maybe we'll see a response in the zooplankton as they take their seat at a well-laid table. That was the Plankton Review for the week of March 29th, 2021. A snapshot of marine plankton from the edge of San Francisco Bay. Like and subscribe for more plankton-related content. And remember to always support your local National Marine Sanctuary.